Hi, my name's Lila Quinn, and it's a pleasure to be part of this poetry marathon. Thank you so much to the Woodland Pattern Book Center for hosting this. And thank you to my dear friend, Mikey Swanberg, back from the edge for inviting me to read. Shout out to the Mikey Swanberg crew. I love you all. Uh, I'm going to read a series of short poems, beginning with Self-Deceit Number 3, which is after a photograph by Francesca Woodman. I know that room inside you, where you go to hide when you're scared and don't want to be seen. Where your back is turned away, eyes lowered, if they're even open, shut against some shame. And I'm beginning to think shame is always a lie. To leave the house without mascara and not have to say anything to anyone. To know the make of the wall of that room inside us tells me as much as glass set against a dark back. I have a thing for backs. I can see where you shoulder your heartbreak can guess where you feel cracked, concrete, maybe poured over your heart once. And I can take your hand while your other reaches for the hammer with which to chip away gently, gently. Uh, this next poem is the oldest of the bunch. Mikey, you'll probably know it. It's useful being top banana in the shock department, which is after Audrey Hepburn's performance as Holly Golightly. Time passes quickly outside. Inside, there's only saying prayers, trying not to fever infinite. Times my face is forced the water. Who said I needed to be saved? Who said I needed to be cleaned and groomed? I've got enough man in me to last your lifetime sentence. I don't have to say always yes, though I'm glad I got good at playing dress up. Is it the sweetness? Why we drop liquid acid onto sugar cubes. I just play and play hard, which I'm sure is something that said by many people doing evil things in a game they only half create. What I want is simple, to live without comment, unless I ask. We can talk if you taste the nodes at your temple, if your cry and your laugh sound essentially the same over windows screening you from the crane-draped world. I can do most of my own heavy lifting. I keep throwing a book at the ceiling just to see how it lands. I'll say yes if I want to. You'll say you owe me, and let's agree we agree to let it sit that way without you shooting anyone over oil or a sandwich. Let's not force the sandwich into my mouth until I shoot you for what I will say to be instead, and I'll eat when I'm hungry. Let's just light a cigarette, gather around the fire, tell stories until we fall one by one asleep before we again wake up someone else. That's all I want. Uh, this next one's one of the newer ones in the bunch, uh, and it's uh, titled after a Greek word that I'm sure I'm mispronouncing, so apologies, but clinicky. I talk myself into more space, can't resist noting the orchid dropping those ladyboy blooms. And I joke with my friend Diva about waxing our faint mustaches, how my OB noticed the bruises on my ass, asked, did you fall? And I told her the truth, no. I consented to being hit, by the smell of lilacs and a Loki's not cable paddle, both striking the same place in my heart in the end. She laughed, knowing a lot about pain's weird mark on bodies and psyches. I knew I liked the look in her eye when I picked her out from the internet lineup of gynos. We call it clinical, which roots in the Greek as bedside. And I remember the poet's job sometimes is to keep track of these things to nestle into the dark little places we all come from and often go back to. For what is it? Comfort. Relief. And finally, I'll close out with a poem called After the Harvest Moon. Sunning myself naked, snake tattoo blazed onto my bare back, there for any stranger walking through the pines. Hello, friend, I mean it. Let's not prove each other wrong, smiling like flowers at the sky. We could lift like a helium balloon my unborn daughter has let go of. Don't you see her there in a little orange sweater? Hands tucked in, two long sleeves. She's not yours, stranger. She belongs to me and my love. Then again, she does to you, doesn't she? Really none of us at all. For the sake of this poem, we'll say she belongs to the world and my love and I care for her together our jeans snuggling like a snake to warm stones. Everywhere we look, many pasts have yielded to radiant futures, unfolding now as love notes. How sweet to think of it this way. 
How sitting across from you feels like a forest going gold. We will have fire through winter. We will hold each other close. Stranger still, we will meet people walking by, smiling with us. I want to believe it, I do. We will.